They do have a timeout. Decide not to use it. Curry, way downtown. Bang! Bang! Oh, what a shot from Curry! All right, guys. I cannot say anything officially now. I am still going to have to cross some T's, dot some I's, but I'm going to have a very exciting announcement to make later on this week. And what I can say now is it looks like we are most likely going to be live streaming very often, very soon. So if you would like to come through, if you would like to hang out with myself, get some questions personally answered, what I advise you to do is I advise you to go down there and I am sure you're already subscribed. But more importantly, you need to be hitting that bell next to the subscribe button because what that is going to do is that's going to give you a notification whenever we go live. That way, if you have the chance, you can come through, you can hop in the live stream, you can check out what we are doing. I cannot say anything more than that right now and I can answer some questions. But that's it and in this video, I'm gonna be going through and I'm gonna be talking about some under the radar players that I think we need to be either prioritizing in a trade or we need to be picking them up off the waiver wire. Obviously, this is going to depend on how deep your league is with what options are going to be where. But anyway, our first player that we're going to talk about is really not under the radar for anybody in regular just NBA circles, but he's under the radar for fantasy circles. And this is Anthony Edwards. Okay, so with Anthony Edwards obviously being selected at the very top of the NBA draft this last offseason, nobody is going to be surprised to see him taking that next step up. But honestly, I think that time is now. I mean, this 19-year-old is now finally coming into himself where he is becoming an impact player for the Timberwolves. If we look over his past five games, he is averaging 30 minutes a game close to 20 points, four rebounds, three assists, and a steal a game. So obviously Anthony Edwards started the season off slowly, but we can explain this away. I mean, Carl Anthony Towns was not there. Without Carl Anthony Towns there, what were the other teams gonna be looking at to stop? They were gonna be having to stop D'Angelo Russell, who obviously that's not a large task for anyone. And Anthony Edwards, outside of that, this is a roster that really does not have too much talent on it. And I think with Carl Anthony Towns coming back and opening up everything for the other players in the rotation, Anthony Edwards obviously playing a completely other position where he's not gonna have to worry about his own minutes being cut into. I think we are gonna see the minutes maintained for Anthony Edwards, but the efficiency should drastically go up with Carl Anthony Towns coming in and Edwards is 19, guys. I know a lot of people want to run out. They want to go, oh, the Timberwolves are so stupid. They should have gone with LaMelo. How in the hell are they going with Anthony Edwards? And I'm sitting here going, guys, can can we pump the brakes a little bit? Can we calm down? I, I mean, it's the very beginning of the season. You're critiquing right now a 19-year-old on the worst team in basketball. Can we give him a little bit of time to develop? I think that he is finally doing so. And I'm very excited to see what we have from Anthony Edwards over the next month. Okay, so now our next player is gonna be in a completely different mold, but this is Thaddeus Young. And here with Thaddeus Young, I understand. I mean, he's not gonna be someone putting up a ridiculous amount of points every given night, but what he is gonna be giving you is he's gonna be giving you assist and rebounds. I mean, he is a straight up assist and rebound monster. We saw him a couple nights ago be two points shy of his first career triple-double. And yeah, I said that correctly. I mean, he did not have the scoring. He had the assists. He had the rebounds. That's just the type of player that Thaddeus Young is. And he's also going to provide you some value with his steals at the same time. So while in a points league, maybe you're not too ecstatic about Thaddeus Young, in a category league where he can single-handedly win you your assist category based on the position that he plays and the production that he has for very cheap, I think that this is a player that we need to be looking at, knowing that he's also not killing you with rebounds. It's kind of a no brainer, in my opinion, for those kinds of formats. All right, so now our next player, very similar to Anthony Edwards. I mean, he's not going under the radar for anybody who's just talking pure NBA, but for fantasy basketball, he is. And this is Jeff Green. Okay, so if we take out last night's game against the Clippers, and if we look at Jeff Green's last 10 games, Jeff Green has yet to score less than 10 points, even with 
Kyrie, Kevin Durant, James Harden all being there. And it's because Jeff Green is getting a ridiculous amount of minutes in this rotation based on the way that the Brooklyn Nets defense is looking at the moment. I mean, they really have no option but to play Jeff Green as much as they are. And this is going to be something that continues to happen. I mean, he's averaging nearly six assists a game. But something else that I want to point out is that Jeff Green is perfect for those category leagues. Because when you're playing alongside some stars like Kevin Durant, James Harden, Kyrie Irving, while yes, you're not going to have your minutes through the roof, while yes, your usage rate and your rotation should be a little bit lower, what's going to happen is the opposing team is going to have to give so much attention to switching over to a KD, a Kyrie, a James Harden, that Jeff Green is going to be getting a ridiculous amount of open looks. So we are going to see those efficiency numbers for Jeff Green. They should be at a career high if you just take into account how many open looks that he is going to see throughout the course of the rest of the season. So for a points league, very similar to Thaddeus Young, I don't think we get too excited about Jeff Green. But if you're playing in a category league, this is where we need to be going insane. All right, so now our next player. I talked about him two videos ago, and then we had Garrett and Johnny talk about him on the last video. But this is going to be Jaron Jackson Jr. And guys, if there's anything I need you to get through your minds this week, if there's any takeaway that you have from any of these videos, it's go get Jaron Jackson Jr. I, I am so tired of people just putting him on the back burner. I mean, Jaron Jackson Jr. is going to come in and he's going to be an impact player right away. He is still only 21 years old. I mean, I understand that that jump from year two, I'm sorry, to year two from year one last season was impressive, but we need to put some context behind it. I mean, Jaron Jackson Jr. was not someone who stayed two years in college. He's not someone who stayed three years, and that's why he was able to make an impact right away for his NBA team. No, he came out at 19 years old. That's exactly what you want to see for these prospects that are supposed to continue to develop their game. That's what Jaron Jackson did at a great level. I mean, last season, Jaron Jackson saw 29 minutes a game in this rotation. He hit two and a half threes a game, which is something that we definitely need to take into account. He had five rebounds a game at the same time and over a block and a half a game. While I know rebounds, not necessarily something we're getting excited about here with Jaron Jackson Jr., this is a player that can put on weight. This is a player that is going to come back just as a grown-ass man. I mean, he's 21 years old. Think about how your body was at 19, 20 years old compared to how it changed rapidly over the next few years. Jaron Jackson Jr. should be able to come out with more rebounding. Those shots are going to continue to go in, and I'm just very excited to see him coming back into this rotation. All right, so now let's go to a player that is under the radar in pretty much every single circle. I don't care if you're just talking NBA. I don't care if you're just talking fantasy. Tobias Harris is someone we need to take note of. I mean, right now, it looks like Doc Rivers has fixed, completely fixed Tobias Harris, where he is shooting 51% from the field, 83% from the free throw line. But more importantly, the three-point shots are going in. I mean, he is getting over two threes a game. This is something that has been unlocking this overall offense, finally getting some three-point shots in. And at the same time, 20 points a game, seven rebounds. Tobias Harris is an impact player in the NBA, and he's going to be an impact player continuously for fantasy basketball. doesn't matter if you play in a point league because that production is there. It doesn't matter if you're playing in a category league because the efficiency is there at the same time. Tobias Harris, any way you cut it, a great investment you can make right now. All right, so now let's go to our next player, and this is going to be OG and Anobi. And here right now, it's everything for a point league. I mean, if you're playing in a category league, I am sorry. He's shooting less than 50% from the field. He's about 75% from the free throw line. But what he's giving you in a category league is exactly what we are looking for. And that is three-point production right off the bat, where he's hitting two and a half threes a game. The same time, 15 points a game, six rebounds, and two steals. So even if you're playing in a category league, I guess the production that we're seeing from OG makes it where you can get away with punting possibly your free throw percentage, especially if you're stacking them with players like Zion and Giannis, and you're just going, you know what? OG could right out win me my steals category, and I do not have to worry about it. 
But even in a points league, this is someone that you want on your roster. This is someone that has been better than I expected. And really, I did not need to dive into the numbers whenever I was told to put him on this video because he is someone that not many people know about. So I really need to be bringing up his name regardless. Okay, so now our last player that we are going to talk about. Actually, kind of funny story here, but my little brother knows him somehow. He actually has gone out to dinner with him and stuff. I, I don't understand how, but anyway, Jordan Clarkson. Right now, Jordan Clarkson looks like he's completely turning his career around. And while I say a lot of this production is not sustainable, while he's shooting 97% from the free throw line, while he's hitting three three-point shots a game, close to 20 points a game, four and a half rebounds, two assists. Jordan Clarkson's definitely someone I would prefer to have in a category league rather than a point league. And that's because the efficiency is through the roof. I mean, with Clarkson, we know when he's on the court, he is literally on the court for one reason only, and that is to get buckets because he is shooting at an incredible rate where he is only on the court for 25 minutes a game, yet he is averaging close to 20 points a game. So Jordan Clarkson, Currently, possibly the sixth man of the year. I think that we need to be considering him a little bit more than we currently were in fantasy basketball because any way you cut it, like I said with the player earlier, I mean, Jordan Clarkson is going to be an impact guy in 2021. All right, now, thank you guys. I really hope y'all enjoyed this video. I really hope y'all got something from it. As always, if y'all did, go down there, drop a like, leave a comment, subscribe to the channel. It helps us out a ton. And yeah. I hope I can make that announcement sometime soon for y'all, and I hope we'll be getting those live streams up and going.